The Apostocat has made his dastardly return to deviousness and nefariousness. Isn't that right, Apostocat? <laughs> oh, Apostocat, we all love you very much. But not Jehovah Cat, he doesn't love you. Anyway, so <laughs> we are now, we have now officially reached the final segment of the first part of my judicial committee. Don't worry, brothers, there is more yet to come. <laughs> because the elders just can't leave it alone. And despite their best efforts, they weren't able to disfellowship me. Now, isn't that hysterical? They came in with a definitive purpose in mind. We even heard their slip of the tongue admission that, well, uh, when we disfellowship you, we won't tell anybody why. <laughs> when, not if. So, despite all their best efforts, despite their questions and queries and uh, continued efforts, for lack of a better word, <laughs> to push me into desired answers that benefit their objective, they were not able to. Three guys were not able to outwit one measly, piddly little 19-year-old. This know-nothing, no ex non-experienced 19-year-old has managed to outwit, outquote, and outthink them all. And I, in my very own humble opinion, think that this is quite the accomplishment. Because just evaluate for a second, if you will, the, the merit, the magnitude of the accomplishment that we have just witnessed. The el I mean, I am a, an unabashed, unapologetic apostate. I at no point conceded to them in any way during this entire discussion that I was going to change my views or that I was going to apologize. I made no apologies for being an apostate. I made no apologies for attacking Watchtower Corporation. I made no apologies whatsoever and I made no serious dismissal of any of their claims apart from the ones that, you know, were obviously their... Uh, Getting, trying to get me to admit false things or things that aren't true, like when they were trying to uh, get me to admit somehow that, oh, well, you say that you don't want to follow God's direction. No! God damn it! That's not at all what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, apart from, you know, denying things like that, I, I mean, the evidence is overwhelming. I am an apostate. They know my videos. They've seen my videos. They've heard the way I've talked to them. And yet, they were not able to disfellowship me. And I think that is quite the accomplishment, personally. But getting on to their silly quotes in this part of it, they, uh, they asked me, continuing from the last discussion, well, why don't you talk about other religions? <laughs> but, of course, they, they fail to uh, notice that we've been talking about other religions all night. We've, uh, in particular, been talking about the, the Catholic Church. And they also said that they, themselves, do not talk about religions. And they do not pejoratively label these religions. And they do not expose various fallacies as they see them. Which is a outright blatant lie. We all know that they've uh, done it in their magazines. I mean, you can literally dig up the quotes in your own Watchtower libraries. It's not that hard. They even provide the out for themselves in the Watchtower that I quoted, which stated that it is not a persecution in any way to publicly expose another religion as being false. Now, why do you think that Watchtower Corporation would make that statement unless they were publicly, publicly exposing other religions as being false? It's simple. It's not a complex concept. I, unless one, uh, you're an elder, apparently. But again, they say, well, we don't talk about other religions. They want me to. Why don't you talk about other religions? And again, the simple fact of being there has escaped their notice because they are totally unaware and oblivious to the fact that we've been talking about other religions all night. Or like Brother Edwards who brought out that, well, pedophilia exists in the Catholic organization. And, of course, they defend child pedophilia by 
labeling their policy as scriptural. And I suppose if you're a Bible literalist, that it is a scriptural policy. I mean, hey, that's not unfair to say. It's immoral, <laughs> but it's not unfair. Um, and that's what happens when you get caught up in the Bible literalism, as Jehovah's Witnesses do. They deny evolution, but they also fail to recognize the fact that you can't fit all 300 million uh, insect species in addition to all of the other uh, bird species and mammal species and all, you know, all the other uh, animals on Earth into an ark that is the length of three football fields and three stories high. You can't do it! It's not mathematically, physically possible. But when you're caught up in Bible literalism, you know, things like that, they, they don't really matter. That gets pushed to the side. Facts in the Jehovah's Witness mind get pushed to the side, and rather conjecture or anecdotal evidence become reigns supreme. Uh, so, of course, when they asked me, and why they asked, that, I mean... <laughs> What I think about the New World Translation has nothing to do with the relevancy of this discussion. It has nothing to do with uh, what we've been talking about. I mean, but, okay, sure. You know, I played along. And I'm going to be honest with you folks. It's a bad translation, but it's no worse than many of the other bad translations floating around there. I mean, it's just another translation. And that's going to make a lot of people mad because, yeah, they do take out the Trinity Doctrine, but as far as I... Well, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But the point is, it's bad, but it's not really so bad as anything else. Um, and so they... I bring out, you know, what I do like of the translation and being, you know, the uh, individualist, objectivist, freedomist that I am, uh, the believer in human rights and uh, the expression of freedom and individualism in society, particularly American society, the expression that I find to be the greatest achievement of the New World Translation is the way they render this great freeness of speech. Um, I think it's in Colossians somewhere where Paul makes that quotation. And... I mean, they asked me what the question was, and then it's hilarious to me that the brother interjected and said, well, that's not what that's talking about. What? <laughs> I mean, this brother, he must be one of those constitutional analysts that, you know, the Second Amendment where it says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. They say, well, that's not what it means. It doesn't mean that the right to be, uh, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Oh, my. When, you know, the Constitution guarantees us, uh, guarantees us the freedom of speech and the freedom of the press, he's probably one of those analysts that say, well, that's not what it means. Oh, my. He's probably one of those people that when you make a direct statement, well, actually, he's done it the whole night. Well, that's not what you're saying. Oh, my, there's a secret undertone secondary message. <laughs> that's completely opposite and contrary to what you're saying. This is the Jehovah's Witness mind, folks. This is the way they function. Now, regardless of the fact that, yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, freeness of speech did have an implication in the discussion at hand, and they wanted to infringe upon that freeness of speech, but that's exactly what the scripture's talking about. I mean, freeness of speech is freeness of speech. It's so elementarily simple, but... The elder wants to deny it. He wants to deny your God-given right. Shut up and agree what we're saying to you. <laughs> uh, you know, and of course also, when I brought out that the tool I like to use on the uh, internet is the Blue Letter Bible, which I encourage anyone who chooses to undertake a study of the Bible to use this tool. It has all the various translations uh, available on tab. In addition to that, it contains the interlinear translations and as well uh, the actual Greek writing uh, with direct links to Strong's Greek Dictionary. I mean, it's a wonderful tool. And they got defensive about analyzing the Greek. As I recall, they've even had Kingdom Ministries that are defensive about analyzing the Greek. Gee, I wonder why. But he said, well, you, you've got, holds up his big, you know, uh, New World Translation index. And it, well, you, you have all the information you have right here. We, we have Greek words translated. Fucking not every word. I mean, it's, 
the, the, yeah, it's not a complete dictionary. You can't hold the volumes of information in one book that you can on the internet. And that's why the Blue Letter Bible is such a valuable tool, but yet something, again, so simple escapes this dimwits notice. <laughs> This is the, the level of intellect that we are dealing with when you enter into a judicial committee setting with members of Jehovah's Witnesses. So then uh, we catch them in another lie. Another lie, what a surprise. They, I mean, they're just spouting them out left and right. Uh, Brother Woolen there for the first time, This well, not for the first time, but one of the few times he's spoken, he uh, pipes up and he says, Oh, well, uh, I'm... Uh, I'm looking at my notes just because I like to take notes. And then he, they took it from there. But the point is, that's a lie. I'm, ta I'm looking at my notes just because I like to take notes. Oh, I guess you're just like a note taker and like you just take notes when, whenever people are talking and like, you know, it's not instructed in the shepherd book, which I've already told them that I've read. Are they serious? What do they think that they're trying to get past me here? Okay, <laughs> what, what, how does this lie benefit them in some way? He was the, you know, obviously the appointed secretary, the note taker, as prescribed and directed in the shepherd book. That's the policy of, uh, of a judicial committee meeting, and here he's trying to slip it past me? It's a lie. Why, and what, who does this lie benefit? Do, does he think it's going to make them look better in some way? I, I don't know. I've given up trying to understand uh, the elders. But they also make another damning admission when, uh, you know, they keep attacking me for bringing out the Watchtower publications. And I say, well, look, the reason why I use so many publications was simply because I knew that is what holds weight, merit, and value in the Jehovah's Witness mind. And we can have a biblical argument all day long. Because, you know, the Bible is somewhat contrarian in nature and open up for individual interpretation. But that's beside the point. It was not going to benefit me in any way to try and argue the Bible with them. Present ping pong back and forward with scripture. And any witness who listens to this is obviously going to side with the elders. But the witnesses who listen to Watchtower and the points that Watchtower brings up, it's going to raise red flags, hopefully. And... Give, get them, spurn them, to make an honest-hearted examination of this organization. But they make the damning admission saying that, well, we wouldn't argue the Bible with you. What? Uh, well, okay, so they're not going to argue the Bible with me. They don't want to hear what I have to say. They don't want to hear the publications. So I guess... The question would be, what is exactly is my purpose for being in this judicial committee meeting in the first place? If they're not here to weigh and evaluate evidence, if they're not here to discuss the Bible rather than merely throw the Bible and use it as a club at me as a tool of condemnation, and if they're not here to listen to my questions and uh, articles raised in their own spiritual food, then what is the purpose of this committee? I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. And then, of course, the last question is, shows really the simple-minded stupidity of the elders uh, when Brother Woolen again pipes up and he says, Well, well uh, why are you trying so hard in my estimation to uh, not get disfellowshipped? R really? I mean, does that question even bear asking? Why are you not, or why are you trying not to be disfellowshipped? Are you, <laughs> are you serious? Like, well, why wouldn't you want your family stripped away from you? I, I just don't understand. Why, why wouldn't you want people to think negatively of you when they hear the announcements? Why wouldn't you want rumors to be spread about you? I mean, this is just beyond comprehension for this particular elder body. So I guess that is what would lead to a question like that being asked. But... Be prepared for part two, because remember, the elders have agreed to look at my information and provide answers, retorts, to my points and my arguments. So will they live up to this expectation, or will they, like so many other cases, merely throw my questions out the window and try to accomplish their uh, single-minded task at hand? 
<laughs> find out. Remember that life is a state of mind.